Hey guys, welcome back to the Rick Shields Ghost. <laughs> the ghost hunt. Oh, we've got some ghouls and some ghosts. Honestly, this is today. Go- this, yeah, this is staying today. In. This my, my mouth, my vocal cords are not working. You've had three off the tea. You've had two provisional. No, this is five off the tea. This is five. Off you the went tea. out of bounds massively. Ra- why? <laughs> I can't speak that way. Now you've caught off you. You went out of bounds right off the yeah, first tea. Yeah, and then, then you went up to it left. Overcompensated. Then you thinned one down the middle. It's in play, but it's not very good. So welcome to the show, episode <laughs> one hundred and sixty. You'd think after a hundred. 160 episodes i'd get the name of the show correct yes but no i failed anyway i'm rick hi, uh, hi rick <laughs> this is guy yeah i'm guy i'm actually guy. officially i'm on a half day today oh, yeah? and i have got as, as we're recording this it's 11 57 a.m i technically finished work at half past 12 today i've so got it as 11 53 did I say seven? Yeah, I've got that wrong as well. I've definitely caught your tongue. So I've got 37 <laughs> minutes left of work. So if this podcast is longer than 37 minutes, that just shows my dedication to you, the Rick Shields Media brand and the podcast listeners in the clubhouse. There so you go. I don't, want, I don't want a round of applause, but if you want to give it my driving, feel free. So I'm going to stretch this out. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna chill out today. Well, yeah, you've done something I'm excited about, actually. You, you've planned something for this. That I, I don't know. Yeah, so as we're getting towards the back end of the year, it's, 2022 has been an exciting year. Mm. Um, and 10 years now doing YouTube, it's it's been a, a hell of a journey. But this last 12 months, I really look back and I've reflected this morning on a few moments in time from this year that I look back and go, wow, mm. like that was pretty amazing. So in this podcast, I'm going to go through my top five highlights from 2022. Wow, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've got no idea what I can... Are these kind of YouTube-related personal or golf, or a bit of everything. What we None of it me. is actual personal at-home stuff. All of it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to share that stuff on the podcast. Um, no, a lot. all of it is work-related. Okay. So whether it's uh, videos I filmed, you know, golfers I filmed with, mm-hmm. venues I filmed at, certain different challenges, um, <clears throat> highlights, and I think it'll make sense as we go through the top five towards the end. But right now, we're filming this podcast a little bit earlier mm. because I am currently now, right now, in America. But you're here now. I know. How's this made, work? I, 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 who knows? <laughs> but I am having a week over in America, in Orlando. We're going to do some filming over there. Unfortunately, guy, you can't make it because of family commitments. Um but it's going to be an exciting week and a hell yes, of a week. it is. We've got some, again, I'm not going to be there, but I know what's going on. And some of the things that should be happening are very exciting for the channel. And they will be in next year's top five things because yes. they'll, they'll be recorded this year, but the content will go out in 2023. So that can fall into next year's category. I and think so. if what you have got planned all happens, which it should do, some of those videos will definitely be... 100% in next year's top five. Well, or will they not? That's the exciting thing because these videos are so exciting, but next year's could even be better. But some um, golf courses, some players, some new equipment, there's lots going on and I'm very, very excited. And I've, I'm, I'll be honest, slightly apprehensive and a bit nervous. And maybe that's why I've had this stumble at the at the start of this podcast. I feel like there's lots going on in my brain at the moment. I've not been on a plane for nearly three years. The last time I was on a plane was 2020 in Dubai when I filmed with Tommy Fleetwood. And I'll be honest with you, I feel a bit flustered. I feel a bit like... What do I do? Like, how do I, how do I travel again? I'm really excited about flying again. I've never been a nervous flyer, touch wood, but it's like it feels like a new experience mm. again for me, you know. Um, so I'm really I, I'm really intrigued about that. Getting a bit of sunshine in December. Uh, like I said, we're flying into Orlando, staying in Jupiter for a few days, then end up in Tampa next weekend. Um, and fingers crossed, if everything goes to plan, we have some absolute banger videos with some banger guests and potentially some inserted clips for the podcast as well over the next few weeks so uh, lots going on exciting times um we'd have also seen on the channel last week we started properly again almost feels like a refresh button on the break 75s we did we mentioned about Silith. now a bit of a spoiler alert if you've not watched break 75 yet we will give some of it away so maybe skip five minutes but break 75 at Silith, there was rick shields there was guy charnett there was assistant pro tom what a um, amazing golf course that somewhat feels like a hidden gem to a lot of people. Yeah. But brutal. Yeah. We we caught it on a day that was typical UK winter weather. Yeah. Like it was it was a bit murky. It wasn't particularly very nice. There was no sunshine. Like all day, zero sunshine. Yeah. It was cold, it was windy. Um but but a hell of a layout. The golf was interesting. So what did you was it nine or ten over? Ten. 
10 over. Hmm. But it was a weird one because I actually felt like, and Tom said it on on start of the video, the, the wind normally is into wind on the way out, mm-hmm. downwind on the way home. Yeah. He said, however, today is different. It's downwind on the way out and into wind on the way home, which is, he said, it's the much harder way to play it. <laughs> it is. And um, that kind of reflected a little bit on the video. I played okay front nine, nothing brilliant. But then the back nine playing those last kind of seven or eight holes back into wind was real brutal. The front nine, yeah, it was easier. However, I think that would, that round was very much a typical Rick Shields break 75 round because, let me come on to it, it started off not too bad at all, quite solid, a couple of bogeys here and there, not not ideal. But I feel like, and this is the, the, the difficult thing with break 75 on a par 72 course as well, when you get to like two or three over, which in those conditions after like nine holes, isn't a bad score? Is that what you were after yeah, nine, about two yeah, over? I was two over. But you're already thinking, you suddenly start saying on camera and off camera, Right, I need a few birdies now. And your mindset is, which I understand, if I get a few birdies, get back to level par, I'm in this kind of safe zone, and break 75 should be tick, big green tick, done. However, chasing those birdies causes you to sometimes end up making a bogey. Hitting driver off the deck. Yeah, and there was a shot, I watched it back before the edit, where you said, um, all right, I'm going to try a shot now I've never tried before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you hit like a three-quarter 50-degree wedge, like a soft floaty one that you then fatted. And I know, we've not seen the video go live yet, because we're recording this early. I guarantee there'll be comments about that. And it's kind of like that mindset of, which I know, I obviously I know what breaks it has are coming and, and things go a lot better. Um, but I think it's just it's just that, isn't it, as well? That combined with the fact the golf course got much harder back nine. It's very easy to tell that two over becomes a ten over. It's not that you need to massively improve by eight, eight shots. It's just little small things. And you know what? Part of me as well wonders whether even just that, that really flippant comment on the first tee affected my psyche yeah. going into the back nine like tom said you've normally it's hard on the front nine today it's gonna to be easier and today it's gonna to be really hard on the back nine yeah and i think again because i had maybe if i was two on the front nine i think oh i've got a nice cushion here mm. this is what i should be you doing you would think you needed to, yeah i feel like i had to be level par because it was inevitable i was going to drop shots on the back nine that, yeah. so it's almost even the wording and and it's very interesting and it certainly wasn't tom's fault but you can pick up little comments from people when you play with them can't you yeah. and that can actually influence the way you play your golf 100 percent. and w- yeah when you sometimes the this is almost counterintuitive but the best way of playing a golf course sometimes can be blind because although you don't get that local knowledge if you hit one on like say there's a hole for example there's a marker post to aim at and you hit it roughly on that and you get to your ball and you go, oh my word, I did not realise that all left was out of bounds. But when someone tells you that on the first tee, they go, don't go left. That's giving you advice in a friendly way, but all of a sudden you're thinking, oh my God, this is a scary tee shot. But my favourite part of the whole video, and it's, it, it tick, I think that makes me laugh. What hole was it quite early on? About four or five, you hit that hybrid and you blocked it. And you <laughs> yeah. went, this hybrid is leaving my golf bag. <laughs> the very next shot, you're in this horrendous thick rough where you should just chip it out. And you pull out this hybrid <laughs> and then after it provisional. Well, I think I think again, that possibly showed the fact that I felt like I had to make a score yeah, for do. nine. Um and I had you know, I almost chipping out and playing for bogey on that hole, almost I wasn't allowed to do that. Because I felt like the front nine, even though that that actual hole, the fourth, was into wind. Yes. Um. So anyway, great golf course. I think the game is trending. Well, that's what we're going to come on to. Without giving this away, I want you to, out of 10, rate your performance at Silith. Out of 10 on that video. Uh, six. Okay. Now we know, we know, and the audience, that Crail is coming next. And then Ely. We don't want to give away scores. What would you say your performance scores are more like in these two or hints? Closer to 10. Closer to ten, still not tens. Uh, Crail, I would say my mindset was the closest to ten it's been for a while, yes. and I'd say my game was getting closer to ten. So that, that's good. And then Ely, I felt like my weirdly my game was closer to ten. My mindset mindset wasn't as close to ten. So um, there will be a day where I blend everything, and and I think I could potentially really really shoot the lights out but it's going in the right direction which i'm really pleased about i feel like the, the little bit of work i did over the last few weeks has definitely helped um me and my mindset and just put me in a much a much nicer position in my golfing life um and then next year just a bit of breaking news season three of break 75 will be 
bigger, better, more, what's the right word? Almost more adventurous, I'm okay. going to say. Is a little, a little Sell me peak. the sizzle. Okay, I'm at right. Let's play, let's play this out now. You're Rick Shield, okay. That's who you are. I, in this I'm Rick Shield. Okay, let me. Okay, get him. And I've got my beard. I've got, okay, got okay, my hat on. Yeah, yeah I'm Rick Shields. Yeah, okay. Hi, Rick. Um, <laughs> and I'm Johnny Public, okay. J Dog. Yeah. And I see you at the range, traffic okay. golf centre. Yeah. I go, hi, Rick. You, Rick. Hi, Rick. Rick. Oh, yeah, he is horrible in real life. Have you ever heard this? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, no, it's not me. I'm sorry. No, I, think, I think you've got someone else. Oh, sorry, else. it's Peter Finch. <laughs> That's it, yeah. 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 No, yeah. how would you... So someone says, right, I love Break 75, I dip in and out most weeks. I've heard you've got a season three coming. Yes, J-Dog. I have got a season three coming, and I think you're going to really enjoy it because, first off, there's going to be more episodes than we've ever done before. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Not always weekly. Right. But we are going to do a full season-long season, season, season-long season series of Break 75s, but they're almost going to be broken down into mini-series throughout wow. the year, okay? And there's going to be golf courses you've never seen before. There's going to be golf courses I've never seen before. There's going to be Guy. Yeah, or that little ferret man. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be new guests. There's going to be different situations, um, but it's going to be filmed better i'm going to play better huh. <laughs> sorry i've just seen you shanking it rick on the range um it, it's going to be bigger better and uh, again i would say more adventurous than w- what we've done so far we've had two seasons um first season started off very kind of quick and fast paced and it was all about kind of like almost cramming a, a full 18 hole video into a 15 minute production which was exciting and, and it was something new that we'd never done before and the audience had met, potentially never seen before and it, the feedback was we could do with making them a bit longer mm. then we stretched out to 20 minutes 30 minutes last season some episodes got to an hour i think that's kind of under an hour is a sweet spot yeah and i think that's where hopefully you guys uh martin jones jones yes, if from last week that's what he wants <laughs> with an email, by the way that some guys Father in law is called Martin Jones and watches Break 75 every week. <laughs> Love it with his cans of Stella. Yeah, I've been on the Stella, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I think that's where the direction of, of Break 75s are going. And I am going to commit to bloody practicing harder and enjoying it more, I think. I think that's the big thing that I've not done this year as much when I've played crap. I've not enjoyed it. But I need to get over that. And if I play better 97% of the time, I'll enjoy it. 100% of the time. Well, well, thanks, Rick. It was great to meet you. I do love the channel, but my favourites, Golf Mates and Tubes and Ange, they're my favourite channels. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I get that. You're yeah. always my second or third. third. <laughs> Sometimes. No, exciting. I'm very much looking forward to it myself. Um, quick one before we get onto your... Well, not a quick one, but a medium one. Before we get onto your um, top, top five, five moments. moments of the year. We had an email, and we get lots of emails, as you know, and please do email us if you've got a question, a thought, an opinion, a fact, a um, anything else you could have, no? Advice for Rick to break 75, yeah, advice for me. A complaint. Compl- this is a borderline one, but anyway, if you do want to email us, podcast at rickshields.com. We read them all, um, don't reply to them all, and obviously we can't read them out on the podcast, but we love getting them. Um, and this one is from a lady, and I don't want to read a name out just because... Um, she may want to be stay, staying anonymous, I'm not sure. But it was something that I was... Ca- got- that camera might be picking up on your screen. Oh, sorry. Is it, is it Harry? A, a touch, yeah. A touch, yeah. Okay, I'll move it then. Um, so, Pamela Anderson, you can't see her name. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was something that I was going to actually reply back to and, and take the time to. Like, actually, no, I'll, I'll read it on the podcast and I'll kind of address it because it was something that did... Yeah, anyway. So, it says, Hi, Rick and Guy. I tune in every week and again, it's, it's from a female. I watch the podcast, enjoy the content, I find it entertaining and amusing, and we'll keep listening, but, and there was a but with three full stops, but, 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 bit of gentle and well-intended feedback. Your focus is incredibly male-centric, and it has the emoji with like a bit of a a tear. That hit home, that hurt. Uh, Apart from the odd bit of content with the fabulous Sophie Walker or Iona, uh, brackets, looking forward to the coming video with her, which will be out this week on Friday, Break 75, the golf chat is virtually all about the male game. The only time a woman has featured in one of your imaginary golfer stories was when Barbara was at home to the returning hole-in-one hero, and she put she was probably in the kitchen. Uh, it doesn't mean I'll tune out, but I do feel I'm listening to an all-boys club. I've come to golf fairly late. 
It was something my husband wanted to learn together. I had a preconceived view that it excluded women with the archaic rules and not being able to go to the clubhouse through the front door or denied membership. And the membership was uh, older, white uh, males. There's a bit of that still knocking about, but it's all moving forward, and you're part of that. Look at you, Mr. Shields, the top 30 of the most 100 influential golfers. Actually, top 25, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> I'm surprised to find myself absolutely loving golf. It's fabulous. I'm not only uh, I'm not very good, but I've got the bug big time. This is in uh, spite of the fact that I'm quite often the only woman at the driving range or on the golf course. If there's a serious intent behind including women and making it more welcoming and inclusive to wider sections of society, I think you could be a big part of that. I'm not moaning. I'm just sharing the experience of one of your subscribers. I wonder what percent of male and female your subscribers are. We can tell you that in a minute. This is mysterious. Um, I'll keep tuning in. You amuse me. I'm interested in see. I'm interested in to see. Just hearing. Sorry, what you have to say. P.S. I'm only down the road in Lancashire. Um, I love that your global audience is shining a torch on the northwest. Very nice. So, um, I, I suppose. <clears throat> I mean that, that that's. That's a nice email, yes. and, and it's it's absolutely fantastic that we are attracting such a wide audi- range of audiences. Mm. And I'm not even just talking male, female. You know, there's a lot of young audiences out there, real much older audiences out there. You know, different people from different backgrounds and countries. Some some fans who have got into golf really recently. It's brand new to them. Some fans have been playing golf all their lives. So that the width and depth of the audience. Luckily for us, is is huge. Certainly in the golfing world, um, I think to counter that a little bit is that I actually think we do feature quite a few female guests. We've had quite a few on the channel, um, and we do also touch on quite a lot of kind of important topics in the golfing world. Um, I'm sorry that she doesn't feel like we touch on enough, um, but I know our audience is. Very male centric. Have you got the number there? Is it like ninety? Well, so, so that's it. So that the main channel, the Rick Shields Golf main kind of um, channel, is ninety seven percent male. So that just shows you. And then the actual podcast channel, which obviously you're listening or watching on now, is ninety eight point one percent male. So I suppose there's two ways of looking at that. We definitely love to attract uh, uh, more women to the channel. And, you know, definitely encourage more women to play golf. That's something that we have had emails about before, you know, from certain DRICs where people have said, you know, I'd love to get my partner, my wife, my girlfriend into golf. How can I do that? And you've given some great advice. And obviously you're a family man with two young daughters who you've given great advice on how to get them into golf, get them, um, you know, keen into golf. And, you know, I I haven't got children yet. I have actually got a daughter on the way. And um, I've got two young nieces who have taken the driving range. I've been to the driving range with my wife, with my mother. And, you know, we're definitely pro-women in golf. I think, just a note on that as well, we've, we've, we've been really lucky actually to have some great um, women on the podcast to tell their story and different stories as well. So we've had, obviously, Carly Booth, uh, Annika Sorenstam from that real kind of... I mean, that's... I mean, Annika Sorenstam, you don't get any bigger than that in the world of women in golf. Telling huge. her story of, of her golf. We've had, you know, Sophie Walker, um, Incy Mehmet have told their story of professional golf then into the media yeah, um, and, and how they've been success. And then we've had, kind of had, you know, more kind of influencer style. So we've had uh, Mia Baker on the podcast oh, yeah, who told her story of how she found it hard to get into golf as a woman and, and the clothing wasn't right and how she got in touch with big corporations to try and fix that. And she's just done a great job of that. And we've even had women on the podcast who've got very um, kind of successful roles in the world of golf. So we've had Gemma Hunter from England Golf who regardless of gender or anything, is the most um, clued up person in the world of golf and handicaps you'll ever yeah. meet. Quite literally, yeah. it's her job. She yeah. knows more about handicaps than anybody, certainly in, in, in the UK. Um, so we've, we've definitely tried to, to give women a voice in this platform. Of and we, then, we would never shy away from female guests. We've, we've always absolutely. been trying to reach out to, you know, that list is phenomenal. Like, well, we've and had that's some just the guests. podcast. Yeah. You know, we look at your main channel, you've had obviously Hannah Davis on, who's a local golf coach. She, she She's featured in... You know, I'm going to be quite crude in saying this, but the, these people understand that when they come on your channel, their follower base grows, which is partly what's in it for them and why we, we want to provide them with that, and you do. And that then, in turn, she's a golf coach, I'm sure, seeing her get more lessons. It's helped her to get some level of sponsorship, and we know that, and that's great. You've also had Anne Van Dam, Olivia Cowan, Annabelle Dimmock, uh, Iona Stephen. Uh, the list goes on, basically. But I think just, just on the note of why the podcast might may feel quite male-centric at times is the fact, well... You know, we are both male. Um, We can only speak on really on our stories and our life in golf. And kind of unfortunately, I suppose, we have a a very, 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 very high male audience. 
if we were to start doing a section every week on, you know, the best ladies clubs in the market or, you know, things like that, that would service a certain percentage of our audience, but obviously only a small percentage. So what I would like to do is is certainly address, you know, we'll continue to have amazing females on the podcast. That's something that we will definitely do. You know, again, Sophie Walker came to our live show and she yeah. was phenomenal. She was probably the, the best on stage, yeah, let's be was, honest. Yeah, she was. so good. Um, but there also are many, you know, if this person listening uh, isn't aware of this, there's a lot of female creators out there as well who you should go and check out. I know there's a girl, is it Hannah Holden, who does a lot of work for National Club Golf? Yeah. She's very good. She does a lot of the reviews. Uh, again, Sophie Walker does does a lot. Mia Baker, uh, Rach McQueen. I tell you, Mia Baker does these these nights as well. Have you seen these in London? Yeah, Jazzy <clears> Golfer as well. At Pitch and she... And She'll open it up to kind of non-golfers, really. And when I've seen it on Instagram, it's absolutely buzzing. The nights look amazing. And to be honest, a bit probably opposite to us, it looks like there's 98% women there, yeah, which is gr- absolutely phenomenal. So there's so many opportunities to to meet, you know, females in golf, you know. And, and I, un- I understand it because I've, I've actually got <clears throat> quite a deep connection to this because it was my mum that got me into the game of golf. Yeah. Like, it was literally yeah. my mum going to a driving range, getting lessons, dragging me along, joining us at a golf club. She was a lady captain really quickly. And she, obviously she met loads and loads of friends through golf and, and that set me on my pathway. Like it was, it was, and even then what we're talking 25 years ago, there was no real barriers. That was quite an easy thing. And I'm not saying that's perfect everywhere, but as a woman and a junior going into a golf club, uh, there was certainly no restrictions from what from what I gather and when I speak to my mum there was no real restrictions with that yeah and that's something I just wanted to address because it's not I don't want to come across as too defensive on this I'm more than happy for people not to, <coughs> to like me personally and some people don't like you and that's just that's just life you can't please everybody but one thing I don't want this podcast to ever be seen as is you know not inclusive you know yeah. they joke about the clubhouse hashtag the clubhouse to enter that you've got to listen to all the podcasts doesn't matter if you're male female what your your background is your beliefs your, your heritage anything like that so that's something that we uh, just wanted to pick up on. Yeah, very good. And uh, yeah, looking forward to having lots more guests on next year. And uh, as always, a real wide mixture of guests. Right, my top five moments. Now, <clears throat> each year, at start of new year, it, it's kind of that time where you look at the, the club up and coming year and think, I wonder what's going to come this year. Like, we've been very, very fortunate in the position that, that I, I get to be in that I've had some unbelievable opportunities. Every year surprises me with opportunities that you think, wow, that's that's really cool. I can't believe I'm doing that now or I can't believe that's happened. And I, when I look back at 2022, and again, I don't want this to feel like too much of a wrap up, but obviously we're getting towards the winter months, is that I look back and go, what the hell? This year has probably been even again elevated the highlights that i've got in the in this uh in this list here i want to re- read out a couple that actually didn't make it on the list wow enough. okay first off this is the long list yeah this is the just outside the top five list because we've even done things like for example we hit two million subscribers this year on youtube yeah like what no. how mad is that that was in january 2022 um uh, and the first ever channel to hit it, we we doubled a million, which is obviously uh, only recently just been done by Good Good hitting a million subscribers. Um, to have that level of audience, and it's super appreciated, and hopefully that comes across on videos and what we do with the podcast. But uh, things like that are amazing. And the other thing, we've actually had a chance this year to meet a lot more fans, I feel. Certainly through the years of COVID, through 2020 and 2021, that was hard. But this year, it's been great to r- arrange range nights like, how good have they been? Unbelievable. We want to do more. We want to be able to meet fans in even a bigger scale. Because, like, 100-odd, it's great as a range night. But, obviously, the numbers are in the millions now. Yeah. I don't know how we do that just yet, because, obviously, there's safety reasons and things like that, because that's why we've not been able to get more at a driving range. And I still want to be able to offer my time to everybody that comes to a driving range night, a range night. But... That's been really incredible. You know what I've loved about the range nights? Like you said, there's going to be definitely more coming. And maybe they won't all be filmed because the, the, the benefit of filming them is they make great content. And I think it shows people having a great time. And But the only downside to filming them is sometimes it's it, we're, we've got two minds. Haven't we? we were kind of thinking about the, the night and people having a great time. And we're also thinking about the production of the video. So we will be a mixture of those. But I think there's two twofold, really. I think when we have the range nights, it's great seeing you interact with, with people that love the videos and that obviously want to speak to you, maybe get a picture and whatever it might be. Some heckle you sometimes, which I think is funny. There's good banter. But arguably, even bigger than that, 
I love how people almost form friendships on the night. Yeah. So with with range night, we normally have five, six, seven people in one bay. If you've come with you and your mate, then you're gonna have to get chucked in a bay. <laughs> Loosely, we use that term, lashed into a bay with five random people. By the end of the night, the, you see nice. people swapping numbers yeah. and Instagrams and going organizing a game of golf together and. That's really powerful, and it's like, you know, that's what the videos and the YouTube kind of community, if you like, can do. It can bring people together, and golf is a unique sport and a great sport in that you can go and play on your own, clear your head, and just play against the golf course, play against yourself, but nothing beats going playing golf with two or three mates and having a laugh, and, and yeah. that's what these range nights go on to do. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay, ready? Yes, number the, five. The official <laughs> the list. The official list. The official list. Number five. Yep. Okay. Playing with legends. Oh, so this is a broad. This is not true. Well, okay. it is, but I couldn't. I couldn't separate it. It's a better joint fifth. Okay, joint fifth. In this a year, five. I got to. We got to spend time with two, like, categorically legends of the game, like top ten most famous golfers ever. Yeah. Okay. One of them being Sir Nick Faldo. Like, if you'd have said to me at the start of this year that we would have been going out on the golf course at Cruden Bay up in Aberdeen, which was a horrendous day, like the weather was tr- atrocious, to go out and film with Sir Nick Faldo, mm-hmm. then to sit down and do such an incredible in-depth podcast with him. Yeah. It's right up there with my favourite this year, podcast. Yeah. Because I just wanted to continue to ask him questions about his life. He's won six major championships. He's won the Masters, the Open. Like, he's the most decorated English golfer ever. And to spend time with him, to film with him, something that I I wasn't sure how the audience would react to it because it's so, like, different to the audience. I feel like we speak to on YouTube. The audience really reacted well to it. So that, that, for me, was a real highlight. And actually... Over in the States where I am now, I'm actually going to be meeting up with him again, which is going to be really exciting for some stuff that he wants to do for his channels. So that was really cool. Mm. Um, but the other one, and I, this is why it kind of comes into joint fifth, Tom Watson. Tom Watson. I mean, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be his son. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Getting to spend time with Tom Watson is, is, is unique enough. Okay. Yeah. Getting to t- play, spend five minutes in his company would possibly make this list. Okay. Mm-hmm. You then sprinkle on, it was at St. Andrews. The home of golf. You then sprinkle on, it's the fact you're playing the old course in reverse, alternate shots with Tom Watson. Yeah. It's like, what? It's like, how the hell? I think out of all the things I've done this year, probably that's the moment where I stood there and and really pinched myself and gone, what the hell? How has this happened? Like making videos at at Trafford Centre, hitting a few balls, trying to give some advice about coaching. I'm now playing the old course in reverse with Tom Watson. I mean, it's, it's, so, I mean, this is number five, by the way. Wowzers. So things are going to continue to get better from there. But that, <laughs> that for me, was really, really just epic. And, and um, the week of the Open, we, I got to bump into him again and interview him and mm. met his wife, his, his new wife. New wife. And, like, we had a great interaction there. He really remembered spending time with us filming mm. a, a month or so early. He was, was just a lovely, lovely guy. So that, in at number five, is spending time with legends. And I'm looking forward to doing more of that. Mm. There's probably not, obviously, there's more legends on the list. But, like, imagine being able to spend next year spending some time with Jack Nicholas. for Imagine example. having Thanksgiving with Tiger Woods. You, you Tiger, <laughs> and Charlie having thanks. <laughs> and Nicholas around having, the table. Yeah, having turkey. So I think, I think anything like that is, is just amazing, Okay. In at number four. In at number four. Is something that um <laughs> I didn't think I could achieve. And and there was there was lots of time to reflect as I was doing it. My charity walk across yes. Scotland. Walk 150. Now, the idea, the concept of it, to, to start from Presswick, the home of the first ever open venue, to walk 150 miles across Scotland. Carrying my golf clubs mm. all the way to St. Andrews to raise money for Prostate Cancer UK. Six days, six marathons a day. It was just, the idea itself was just mental. To have achieved it, 
and to have raised as much money as we did, we managed to raise nearly, I think maybe either nearly 130,000 or just over 130,000 pounds, which is going to be incredible. That money is going to go a oh, long yeah. way in the world of, you know, uh, research and development and awareness. But being able to just, I, I still look, I look at my camera roll. When I was looking through this list, I was going through back on my camera roll and we actually never made a video about Walk 150. We might do in the future. We did actually film most of it. <clears throat> it might be a kind of a Netflix documentary style video that we do at one point. But I really look back at it with really fond memories. Mm. Like, it was hard, it was tough, and it was challenging. But it was so rewarding at the same time. I think on that, you know, kudos to you. You, you obviously, I, I was only there for the first little section of it. And I can't comprehend how difficult that was on your feet and your joints and, and, and mentally as well. So, you know, you, you've got huge uh, admiration for that. But but also, and, you know, arguably as important, if not more important, th- those people actually put the hand in the pocket to, yep. to add into the t- uh, to the to the bucket, so to speak, because, you know, there was there was some, I, I looked through the Just Giving page and there was some incredible donations of like hundreds of pounds by some people who you think must obviously have a, have a few quid. But, but something as well, it's almost sounds strange but almost more kind of heartwarming is the people that donate like two quid or five quid it's like you know not everybody obviously in the current economic state as well can a, an afford to, to give money to charity and the fact that you you encourage them to do so by doing such an incredible feat but the fact that people did that you know it just shows again on this i think there's gonna be a link with all these different things we say this community element of people coming together and doing something for the greater good and it, it's really, really special and powerful. So thank you so much to everyone that donated. It's incredible. Yeah, it was. So, so again, next year, 2023, I've got something crazy planned. For walk next... one million, <laughs> one billion miles. Walk, walk to the moon. Uh, I've got something planned for next summer. So stay tuned for that. There'll be another charity. I want to try and do something big for charity each year because one, it's, 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 as I say, raising money for charity. It's the community side of it and, it, and it's challenging and pushing me and I, I really look forward to it. So that was really cool this year. Number three. Okay. Three. Um, top three. Oh, yeah. Top three. In bronze position. Oh, I've got the... No, I'm going to stick with it. In number three was filming with... Guy Janik. Adam Scott. Adam Scott. Wow. So Adam Scott, he's not only strolled past Nick Faldo... And Tommy Watson, he's actually just shoved him and gone, yeah, get back. I think mainly because um, we lived, we grew up in his e- in his era. Mm. You know, Tom Watson and Nick Faldo, I can obviously look at them and go, wow, you know, legends of the game. But I started golf at the very tail end of Nick Faldo's career. Yeah. Where when I started playing golf, Adam Scott was really starting to kind of, you know, uh, yeah. second to only Tiger, really, in a lot of things. Yes. Um, and to spend time with him, and again, he was so kind on the podcast, and we went out and played at King's Barnes at a 10-shot challenge. He was everything I wanted him to be and more. He was. He was um, very humble and very... What, what always surprised me, and hopefully it's the environment we create, but the, these guys know they're coming for a day of filming, an afternoon of filming, an hour of filming, whatever it might be. It's, it's how much they actually get into it. And I think certainly, no matter how good you are at golf, this has been proven by uh, Adam Scott and a couple of other guys that you've played with, Tommy and, and Westwood, etc. If you get a golfer who's competitive, which all these guys are, against another golfer who's competitive and puts them on the line, whether it just be for pride, they want to win. They want to beat you. And Adam Scott wanted to beat you, but in the most humble and pleasant way possible. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was... It was uh... The fact, like I say, he was so lovely with his time. A uh, couple of weeks after we saw him at the Open and he jumped out of his chair and came running over and chatted to us. And it, it was just, it, I'm so glad. And I've been very lucky. Everybody that I've managed to meet or film with have been how I expect them to be. But I think I almost put more of an emphasis on him. Yeah, I was he's... like, please don't shatter my dreams. Please be just as nice as I hope you are going to be. And he was actually nicer, wasn't the... You know what's mad? That's partly why I would love to meet Tiger because... Obviously, I would. There's no part of me that'd be worried. That yeah. I like him so much, and I've looked up to him for how 25, 26 years, whatever it's been. If he wasn't that nice, I'd just be heartbroken. Yeah. So, Tiger, when we meet, be nice, mate. Please, please be nice. Um, Right. So that was number three. That was nice, Bron. I mean, in some ways, I imagine Faldo's annoyed. He's sat there with three, <laughs> he's, he's got three green jackets. He's looking at we Adam Scott over there with one. Gone thinking, one green jacket you get out of this position. He's there with three and a few claret jugs in his back pocket. 
But so Nick, maybe next year. You has he got three or up. four Nick Valdo green jackets? Three. And then he's got two clarets or three. He's got six majors, 006 is his little I thing. I thought he had three opens and oh, three Oh, so three and three then. Yeah. So, wow, and he still only gets in number five. And, and I, Watson. I didn't Watson hasn't, hasn't Watson won the third Watson's most? Watson's won more majors than you've had hot dinners, my friend. <laughs> and you're there giving number five. Christ. <laughs> They've got to work harder for next year. Right. <clears throat> you might not like this one then. Number two. <laughs> number two. And, and only because... It was something that I've really wanted to do for a while, and it was great to. I think we got a lot out of it as a as a business, as a corporate. It's two time. minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> I ran for these last two. No, I'm joking. Take um, time. In two, uh, because it was that kind of on YouTube right now. YouTube's grown as a platform massively. I think I know we go in this one. In the last ten years, it's grown hugely, yeah. and it's been great to see creators and grow and develop and you know really kind of work out their identity in the Mm. space um and and i'm proud of youtube creators i feel like youtube creators as a whole certainly in the golf space as a whole anyway but certainly the golf space i think we as a a whole a lot of creators out there are doing really good jobs Mm. okay however i don't know why i needed the however there was one collaboration i really want to try and achieve this this year and and it was six young gentlemen from Texas and by the name of Good Good. And we managed to have a full week of collaborative content at JCB. Mm. And it was bloody hard. Yeah. And it was horrible weather and it was stressful. But it was also eye opening and fascinating, more from a business standpoint as well as kind of a, an, an open forum to spend time with like minded youtubers in that in that space wasn't yeah. it yeah it was you know obviously we were there with our team they were there with their team you know we got to spend time completely together for pretty much six or seven days talking about youtube growth we were they were asking us about how they can develop we were asking them how do they do certain things and it was it was just very kind of eye-opening i felt like we've not had those conversations for a long time with any other creators no it, it was it was really good the content that came out of it was very good it was great for for them to kind of learn from us in, in a creator that's been for 10 years it was great from from all to learn from them in how a new bunch of creators are attacking things and it's quite funny though isn't it because when you go back to this list of the top five things of the year obviously naturally with this kind of list it's down to how you perceive things so like you said in one sense i completely agree that this was almost more impactful in some ways than film with Faldo and Watson. As crazy as that sounds to, sounds to say, it was. If you look at the numbers generated, the the reach, etc., it was. But then equally, if, like you said, if 10 years ago somebody said to you, oh, in 10 years you'll be doing YouTube, so you go, oh, right, wow, that's great, and you'll do a collaboration with a big channel, you'd go, oh, brilliant. You, you, you'd, you'd accept it, wouldn't you? But if someone said to you, you'll be playing the old course backwards with Tom Watson, you'd be like, no, well, that's ridiculous with your name up on the open board. So, yeah, it's how you perceive things, but I do, I, I do understand and I do agree that for, for, for the channel and for, for you this year and, and for what it meant to the golf YouTube creator space, that was a very pivotal and, and monumental moment in the channel. Yeah, I just, I just think it was, it was again, just getting like-minded individuals around and, you know, it, it was just it was just a fun week. It was mad, it was crazy, there was lots going on, it was hard work, it was only the week after uh, the Open, it was, there was, it was stressful, it was, but it was like, I got a real kick out of it. Mm. And again, when I looked through my, my photo roll, uh, photo roll which I did do this to put this list I looked through that section and go that's really actually quite cool like the massive fan meetup we got to do yeah you know at the Mar- at Marriott the fact we got to film however many videos it was for our channel for their channel it was a productive week it, it just good it just definitely gave us a bit of a, a different uh, perspective on how content's filmed and they took a lot of inspiration from us of how they co- film their content so yeah it was re- just a collaborative week i thought it was the really offer, if we had they offered me a job they said we'll, we'll triple x your salary i said no i'm not going to america get lost <laughs> they said that. we'll come over to here the um, UK. question then follow-up question slightly off topic but it's also on topic we get asked a lot in the podcast on you get asked on social media wherever it might be about collaborating with other golf creators, whether it be, um, you know, Pete or whether it be up and coming creators who've not got many kind of followers yet, but they're doing something in the space. How do you see 2023 looking in terms of golf creator collaboration? I am open to doing more. I think the the idea has to be really good and it kind of has to be beneficial for both parties. Yeah. Um, I think we've said it even on this podcast, I was maybe going to try and do one this year. I would actually really, really like to do a YouTube golf day again. Mm. Like, a, or a YouTube week or some something that gets all YouTubers into one place um, where it's kind of, 
a bit of competition, a lot of filming, collaborations here, then everywhere. Just being able to grow the space as a, as a whole. Um, it was hard work when we did it in 2019, yeah. but it's something that I feel like we've got some level of blueprint over now. There's more creators out there. That's where it gets difficult. I think there'd have to be some sort of a cut-off point or... I don't know. We, we, it, I think we could work something out. For me, though, it's more difficult because when we did it in 2019, thankfully, we had most of the big creators there. There's obviously always going to be an odd exception, but in reality, there wasn't many people you could say, why is X not there? Why is Y not there? The downside to it now would be there's that many big channels to actually get a date and a venue that would suit all those channels. Even if you got, like, six big ones or however many it would be, there'll always be somebody going, oh, why are they not there? And... That's only somebody asking, but at the same time, you'd be thinking, yeah, I wish such a body was yeah. here as well, but we can definitely give it our best shot and we can try and find a venue, a date, a time frame where we could have something incredible. I think the audience would absolutely love oh, absolutely. it. absolutely. I really do. So that was number two. In at number one. The gold prize, the gold medal. The highlight. Did they get a jacket to wear? I think so. What colour? Well, it's going to have to be a very big jacket. A red jacket. It's going to have to be huge. Big jacket. So this isn't a person. Okay. This isn't a singular video, okay? This is a week in time this year that was just epic. Can I guess? No. <laughs> it was the week that I think I was looking forward to the most this year, and possibly you, okay? It was the week that pretty much the golfing world was absolutely obsessed about this year. No surprise to everybody listening. It was the Open, the 150th yes. at St. Andrews. Yep. And I can't put an exact point of what that week was. There wasn't a pivotal moment. It was everything about that week. It was all the build-up about that week. It was almost a hangover <laughs> after that week. It was like, it, it was as close of a golf festival yeah. that, that, that's ever been put on. Um, obviously you had some of the biggest names, we had all the biggest names in golf we, we got the opportunity of watching Tiger Woods walk over the Swilkin Bridge on that Friday when he'd unfortunately missed the cut you, you're walking around you're seeing all these, we got to meet loads of fans, mm. lo more than we would do at any range oh. night got to do some work at the Open, working for MasterCard and the Open themselves, got to interview some fantastic players and some personalities in the world of, of sport got to go out and drink, it you was did, like a bloody yeah. stag do. Like you did, um, like, uh, but it, but it got, it was just everything about it. I've all almost, it took a hundred percent of my energy, and it drained me all the way down. My battery at the start of the week was a hundred percent, and when I finished, I was, I was redlining. You had this massive, right, huge, huge double in size bicep by the end of the week. And I said, what have we been doing, Rick, with that right bicep? Where are we going with yeah, this? Yeah, <laughs> I know, that's what I was thinking. And then I realised it was that Guinness movement. <laughs> it was just like this, constantly. Guinness, shots, yeah. No, but you're right, and, and, and obviously I can only echo that. What It was the best week in golf, I think, ever for me, full stop. I think what, what it was, when you try and actually dissect as to why it was so good, and there's obviously many, many, many reasons, but we'd been going to the old course at St Andrews for the last year quite often for different reasons, for filming, for, for all sorts of different reasons. And every time you went, it was getting closer. It was getting a little bit busier. There was more infrastructure getting built around the place. And it was the first event for us, really, kind of post-COVID, where life, thankfully, felt a lot more normal. Well, it and felt, you could, yeah, exactly you know. normal. And it was not only was it the 150th, which is such a marquee number, it was at the old course, which if you've never been to St Andrews, you, it's hard to really imagine this, but it's literally a golf course in a town, really. So all the kind of pubs, normally a, a golf major in England, that, well, sorry, the, the, the Open in England or Scotland or wherever it might be, you've kind of got the venue, you've got the tented village and you kind of leave sight and then you go off to your local towns and there's some level of atmosphere at night, but it kind of gets diluted by the spread. With the old course, Everything carries on in within a ten minute Just walk. Spills out onto the streets. You've got obviously fans were, were coming up to you of the channel. You've got people who work in an industry that you've not seen for a while. You've got people who also make content. It, it was just an unreal week. Like and obviously, seeing, seeing friends and like you had family come up. Yeah, there and, it was it was uh, insane. And when I actually look at this list now, the top five, a lot of the things on that list pointed towards the open. Yeah, like filming with Watson pointed yeah. towards the open. Filming uh, the, the doing the charity walk, walking to St Andrews, that was pointing 
gravitating towards. So everything everything was actually pointing that way. Even film with Adam Scott, that was the week before the yeah, opening. Yeah. So it, it felt like St. Andrews is kind of, I know we joke, it's like our second home this year. It really has been. And to have such a fantastic event there. Um, and obviously it went right down to the wire with Rory and, uh, and um, Cam Smith, but also Cameron Young. Um, like you just look at it and go, it was just, it was a bar Tiger winning it. It was almost perfect. But, and I know, but I, and I think as well along that was with, with the open and so with the old course, it does feel like a, a, an event, and certainly that's a venue where anyone playing could win to some degree. Now this year, there's maybe a slight asterisk on that because it was the 150th. There was so much uh, built up around in the narrative that you felt like a kind of relatively unknown player is probably going to struggle coming down that stretch with the with the lead because it's just going to be almost too much to handle. The fact that it went down a bit of a battle between Cameron Smith and Rory, who are literally the best two players in the world, that was fitting. I mean, again, it, whoever wins deserves to win it. But if it was kind of a name that's not, you'd be oh, but what a, what an ending, yeah. what a tournament. <clears throat> and it's actually got me very, very, very excited for this next year's one. Yeah, I just, yeah, just and even just thinking then, <laughs> I think if I missed anything, I was even thinking that some of the even add-ons to the Open, like, hitting shots off the old course hotel with Iona like down to the 17th green and doing some challenges on the old course and and just having all those opportunities they all kind of circulated around the open a little bit this year yeah uh, that might not be every year obviously it's at Royal Liverpool which is much closer to us next year and it might not feel as special I'm sure it probably won't do I'm sure it'll still be amazing um, but yeah it, there's, I'm sure there's moments that people might be listening to and going but yeah you've missed that but also it's just been the fact of getting out and playing a lot more like going out and playing break 75s. Obviously, you've played in loads of them this year as well. Like being able to go and play, have fun, enjoy and make content, you know, all of that side of it. So uh, as an overall year, it's been incredibly good. Um, and I don't feel like I've missed much off that list. No, no. And this, like you said, this, hopefully there'll be a couple more podcasts before the end of the year. So it's not an end of year wrap up as such. It's just something that we wanted to talk about today. And I think like we said then, a bit earlier on, but... It's huge thanks to everyone for watching the videos as well, isn't it? The fact that everybody watches the videos gives the channel and yourself such such amazing opportunities and that continued support. And it's been nice this year that the kind of the we've slightly tweaked the content. The break seventy fives have become a bit longer, and that was a risk because not everybody wants to watch a forty five minute video, an hour long video. But people have enjoyed them, and um, it's exciting. And I think with everyone's support for next year and hopefully the channel growing even more. It's exciting to see what other opportunities you get. What's next? What's next? Yeah, thank our Echo Guys Thoughts. Thanks so much for everybody for watching, listening, for helping out all the channels grow. Um, <clears throat> without you guys, it wouldn't be possible. Um, thanks to all the guys who work tirelessly behind the scenes. Thanks to you for all your efforts thanks you put to, into Thanks to you. To the chat. I, I do a little bit. Thanks to you putting so much effort into it as well. And obviously the lads behind the scenes who, who do a great job editing. Matt's normally doing the podcast. He's off today, but Harry's jumped in. Tim, Ed, um, <clears throat> and, and Matt, who have mentioned before. And then we've got a few new recruits with Sam and Neil. It's growing. Mm. It's getting bigger. It's getting more exciting. And... Uh, here comes next year. Let's do another top five next year and uh, see if I can tr top trump this year's. Just a tweet then, just following on from that next year segment. Just a last, last thing for the podcast. A little bit of a secret nugget for the end for those hardcore listening all the way here. You have Sounds been... Like you're whispering. I am whispering to the nugget. It's a secret nugget. Sorry, I'll sort it normally again now. Um, you have been early testing some new equipment. We've yes. also seen some more equipment, which you can't massively talk about yet. But new driver season you can almost wait there yeah you can smell it new driver season is coming thick and fast there's almost the too grips, many drivers the wrapping the cardboard boxes that come in. some of them in fact let me think now duh, 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 duh. they've all got stories they've all got some level of innovation a lot of it's quite similar and you know you won't be too surprised it's about a bit more forgiveness and a bit more speed blah 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 but i think there's some very exciting products to come out you've hit some with a certain brand um that I only saw a handful of shots of, but there was some definite promise there. Yeah, it might be new driver in the bag season. Is it going to be, do you think, by the way? I, I do fancy some new clubs. <laughs> That's obviously the reason why I'm playing bad. Um, and obviously with the review channel, I'll be testing more clubs as well. So the, the marquee drivers will be coming out on the main channel early January um, from brands such as uh, Ding, yeah. Flame of Shade, yeah. Um. Halloway. These wish knockoffs are getting worse, aren't they? Halloway and um Oh, this one's a tough one. Snowbra. Snowbra. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Stay tuned, lots more to come, and we shall see you next week. Hopefully. 
we might be a day late next week. We'll let you know. Okay. I don't know how we'll let you know, but we might let you know. It'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, what we'll do is, because obviously I'm not going to be in America when you go, I'll go knock on everyone's door and say, sorry, podcast late. <laughs> sorry, podcast uh, late. And also I owe you 12 minutes of overtime. Yep. That's get, four get million pounds, please, sir. <laughs> get yourself off. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do that enough anyway. But. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. <laughs>